afternoon and thank you for the invitation. I'm pleased to be here today and to show you some of our preliminary results on Down syndrome. As I mentioned, I'm interested in biomarkers or metabolic markers that link the disease outcome and the epigenetic and gen the genetic factors. So we think that the diet is a modifiable factor. And um, as you know, we have certain disease outcome in, in Down syndrome, for example, uh, dementia, leukemia, we have insulin resistance, obesity, but we don't have atherosclerosis, despite that we have high blood lipoprotein, for example. So there is, there is a missing link here, and we think that from Down syndrome we can learn uh, about atherosclerosis, obesity, energy metabolism, in addition to <coughs> dementia uh, in, in non-Down syndrome. <coughs> now, coming back to the methylation cycle, as Jill told, um, the methionine cycle and the folate cycle uh, are closely connected via B12 and methionine synthase. We have three genes on chromosome 21. We have also reduced folate carrier on chromosome 21, so we have a disbalance between the methionine and the folate cycle. And we don't really know how this cycle is compensated um, in Down syndrome. So the CBS seems to shift the homocysteine metabolism to cysteine, and there seems to be hypomethylation. That means uh, higher SRH and lower SRM. So SRM to SRH ratio is decreased. But remember that we have an alternative methyl donor, which is choline and betaine, two nutrients. They can supply the methyl group completely independent from the folate cycle. They can supply methionine and SIM. Now, we performed um, a study, a case control study on Down syndrome children and non-Down syndrome children in Germany. And I will show you some of the results which uh, have been recently published. We have uh, uh, 35 children with Down syndrome. The mean age was 11. The study design in our study is slightly different from the one uh, showed by Jill. So we, uh, our subjects were not supplemented and the control group uh, were independent children, were not siblings. So this might explain the differences in the results uh, uh, we don't really know that why we want to confirm this uh, probably when we uh, have the data from Malta. Now, when we compare the control, the non-Down syndrome with Down syndrome, we found lower homocysteine as earlier reported. Uh, we found higher cystathionine. We found higher cysteine, but comparable methionine and glutathione, which is different from the study showed by Jill before. SRH was elevated, SRM was also elevated, but the ratio was decreased. So there is a metabolic hypomethylation. And again, the, uh, the methylation of homocysteine is either B12 dependent or beta in choline dependent. And we found that there is an evidence that the MS, the methionine synthase pathway, is upregulated because the active B12 or the holotranscobalamin was higher in Down syndrome and the, the percentage of active B12 to total B12 was also higher in, in Down syndrome. So there seems to be a compensation, um, an increased methylation via the methionine synthase pathway and also via the BHMT pathway. So we, ha we have higher betaine in Down syndrome, higher choline, and higher dimethylglycine, which is suggesting that betaine is indeed acting as a methyl donor, not only present. And to summarize the results in Down syndrome, we have 30% lower homocysteine, 60% higher cystathionine, 17% higher BHMT or beta-in-choline, and 
the increase in SRH is much higher than that in SRM, so there is a shift in the methylation, and as you see, we have many dietary components. We have methionine, B12, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, we have B6, we have cysteine, we have choline, betaine, all supplemented by the diet. So we think that the diet can play a major role in this pathway, to modify this pathway. And that's why we collaborated with um, a, a group from uh, the US, Friedrich Nyhut. Friedrich and his group have developed a mathematical model for the methylation cycle. So he can uh, simulate an increase in the CBS activity and look how the cycle is changed. And Friedrich just applied our results on Down syndrome, non-Down syndrome on his mathematical model and tried to change the substrate to make this cycle as much as possible similar to the controls. And this, these are the results. If you uh, supplement SRM to Down syndrome, you will have an increase in SRM but you will have an increase in SRH, and you cannot change the methylation ratio, the methylation potential. So SRH is present in a higher concentration, and it, it will inhibit the methyl transferase. If you supplement beta in, you will have a higher increase in SRM compared to the increase in SRH. So this could be a valuable um, potential supplement for Down syndrome. If you add methionine, you will have an increase in SRM, but also an increase in SRH. And if you reduce methionine in the diet, you can shift this methylation ratio, so you can achieve higher SRM uh, than SRH. So we think um, in collaboration with, with Nyhut Group, we think that a vegetarian diet can achieve our goal, which is relatively uh, similar to the Medita Mediterranean diet. So in the vegetarian diet, you have more antioxidants, you have less methionine, and uh, you probably have more betaine because you have more carbohydrates. And the vegetarian diet has less cholesterol, which is probably very important for Down syndrome also. Now, again, choline and betaine are alternative methyl donors. The betaine has a very important function uh, for keeping the, uh, the cellular pressure or the osmolytic pressure, and the choline have, has additional uh, 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 function, um, not only as a methyl group uh, donor, but also as a precursor for phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine and uh, sphingomyelin, which is a, an, another phospholipid, they make co cholesterol more soluble. So uh, if you have higher cholesterol, which is the case in Down syndrome, you need more phospholipid to make cholesterol soluble, and this is probably one protective, natural, naturally occurring protective mechanism in Down syndrome. We don't know why Down syndrome have higher cholesterol, but they don't develop atherosclerosis, probably because they have higher phospholipids. In a different study on patients with diabetes, we found that patients treated with statin, they have higher uh, they have lower uh, uh, phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylethanolamine, but they have lower lanosterol and latosterol, which are markers for early um, cholesterol synthesis. And this was only found in statin-treated people, and you know statin uh, reduce the uh, cholesterol synthesis. So we think that this might be related or might be interpreted um, for people with Down syndrome that we need to lower cholesterol by lowering the intake of cholesterol or using drugs that inhibits the absorbance of cholesterol and not using statins. As you see here, 
people with Down syndrome, children with Down syndrome compared to non-Down syndrome have higher sphingomyelin, phosphatidyl etanolamine, lisophosphatidyl etanolamine, and phosphatidyl choline. All classes of the phospholipids were increased in Down syndrome, probably as a protective mechanism to keep cholesterol soluble. Now, the phospholipids have been related to amyloid beta accumulation. The higher the phospholipids, the sphingomyelin or the phosphatidyl etanolamine were, the higher the amyloid beta toxicity. And uh, as you know, the amyloid precursor protein is expressed on, three, uh, on, on chromosome 21. And this protein can be uh, processed either in the non-amyloidogenic pathway or in the amyloidogenic pathway, depending on the splitting uh, positions. And in this pathway, you will have amyloid beta and not in this pathway. Now, we measured amyloid beta in plasma of Down syndrome children and non-Down syndrome children, and as expected, we found higher concentrations in Down syndrome. And we don't know what is the value of amyloid beta in plasma yet, uh, even in Down syndrome or in, in elderly population. Usually, we measure amyloid beta in cerebrospinal fluids. And we don't know what is the source of this amyloid beta in plasma, either from the CSF or from the platelets. But we found that the higher the SRM in plasma in Down syndrome, the yellow one, the higher the amyloid beta was. And this correlation was not found in normal children. So it seems that higher SRM can increase the clearance of amyloid beta. And uh, that's why we tried to um, simulate the methylation, the hypomethylation in a cell culture model. So we took fibroblasts from Down syndrome um, and we incubated with uh, in, in, uh, different concentrations of homocysteine, SRH, and SRM. And we found that SRH was able to increase the protein expression of amyloid precursor protein and this effect was not dose dependent in the concentration range we used. Now, uh, if you see here the effect of SRH on amyloid beta in the medium, in the medium was slightly decreased, in the cell extract was increased, and the total expression of APP was increased. And this effect was reversible after adding beta or gamma secretase inhibitors. So it seems that SRH is affecting beta and gamma secretase activity or expression, we don't know yet. The effect of SRM was uh, in the uh, different uh, uh, direction. So SRM increased beta amyloid in the medium and decreased it uh, in the cell extract. And this effect was uh, also uh, reversible after uh, adding beta and gamma secretase inhibitor. And finally, when we add lovastatin, which is a cholesterol uh, lowering agent, um, to fibroblasts from Down syndrome, we found a lower expression, a dose dependent lower expression of amyloid precursor protein. And this effect was stronger in a medium, the green one, in a medium which was. Uh, rich of vitamin compared to a medium which was free of vitamins, B B12, B6, and B B uh, folic acid. So, in summary, there are several genes involved in the methylation of the folate, folate cycle which are expressed on chromosome 21, and this causes a disbalance in the, in the methylation cycle. Uh, there was an evidence that the choline uh, the betaine pathway and the methionine synthase pathway are overexpressed or upregulated. The choline metabolism in Down syndrome seems to be differently regulated to supply more phospholipids and to keep chol uh, cholesterol soluble. High, higher uh, amyloid beta in Down syndrome seems to be related to SRM and SRH, and the methyl donors. Um, either in a form of diet or dietary modifications or supplement 
have a great potential to modify the amyloid precursor protein pathway. And um, I hope that we can collaborate in, uh, in, the, in the future studies and we offer measuring the metabolic uh, markers in blood in our laboratory. Thank you for your attention.